Each day, the sun rises over one of the most bewitching places on Earth. Cycles of day and night paint many faces over this enchanted landscape. Fantastic formations stand like frozen giants rising from a luminous desert floor. Here, in the white desert, dreams and realities embrace in a delirious dance. Beyond these ancient geological splendors, the park teems with unspoilt natural phenomena. A variety of landscapes in the endless sands. From sand seas to rugged escarpments, gem-like oases. Lying in the expansive western desert of Egypt, 40 kilometers north of Farafra Oasis, the White Desert National Park was declared in 2002 with the support of the local community. It now covers an area of 3,900 square kilometers. This desert is spotted with vegetated depressions, with plants taking advantage of the deepest points, where the water table sits closer to the arid surface. Many depressions such as Farafra, have been transformed into palm groves and cultivated fields. The region is part of the awesome Sahara Desert. As wide as the Atlantic Ocean, the Sahara has seen its share of reckless dreams, grand romantic legends, and outsiders who attempted to conquer it but failed. It is a world of drifting sands and shifting fortunes. Eons of time are writ large across this landscape, the ground strewn with fossils, vivid indicators of climate change. Fantastic and beautiful sculptures, carved by wind-blown sands, are structures of 70 million year old chalky Cretaceous limestone that was laid down when this region was submerged by the Tithis Sea. Many have been given names. El Hassan, the horse. El Sark, the falcon. El Khabur, the wedge. And El Farka, the chicken. Used as the protected area's logo. Elsewhere in the park, the ground surface exhibits an infinite array of colors, shapes, and textures. Small calcite crystals, and nodules of iron parietes. Playa, yet another sculpture of wind-blown sands, is remnants of an ancient, now eroded lake bed. Rarely seen by human eyes, a secretive wildlife thrives upon this seemingly lifeless landscape. Denizens of the largest desert on Earth, this community of creatures remain a mystery to those who live beyond the dunes. Through the ages, this desert has worn many different faces. 10,000 years ago, it hosted people that have long been displaced by the wild desert dwellers who live there today. At the Obayad Cave, prehistory is recorded on the chalky limestone walls. Engraved motifs, a window to an ancient past. These animalistic images, several thousand years old, reveal long-lost traditions of Nubian rock art. Hand illustrations also adorn the walls, exemplifying the characteristic Saharan style. On a plateau close to the cave, mysterious structures still remain. Scorched by the sun, these physical relics have succumbed to time, and their stories have faded from human memory. Yet they inspire dreams of time primordial, of long-horned cattle and the men who drove them. Early man has also left his mark at the entrance to Jarrah Cave, another vestige of a different, warmer climate in which limestone deposits were eroded by underground water. 
seeping in through fissures to mould fantastic caverns and galleries and stalagmites and stalactites that now adorn the ceiling and floor in a fairy tale of natural architecture. The remnant of another cast cave, an arch left behind when the ceiling eventually collapsed, its innards now exposed to the open sky. And calcite crystals, which once filled the fractures and cavities of the limestone rock, today glimmer amongst the ruined stalagmites. The Sahara is a world of grand extremes, golden sands and searing winds, and dunes that soar like skyscrapers 50 stories high. Some of the largest dune fields in the world are found here in the Great Sand Sea, where a constant shifting of the sand creates mesmerizing patterns. Visitors may catch a glimpse of the ubiquitous desert fox. Here, a puppy begging to suckle finally gets his wish. The sooty falcon or other secretive desert wildlife may also be spotted. Resourceful and elusive, they make their homes upon the hottest and driest patch of land on the planet. An ecosystem so large it accounts for roughly 8% of the Earth's land area. The sandfish, or skink, preys on insects. Yet every hunter eventually becomes the hunted. The sand snake is the nemesis of the sandfish. And all hunters must avoid the punishing Saharan sun. When only 30 centimeters above the sand, the air can be several degrees cooler. This can mean the difference between life and death. In ancient times, Farafra was known as Ti'it, Land of the Cow, a name likely derived from the region's historic association with the cow-headed goddess Hathor. Known for her nurturing qualities, a fitting totem in such a physically hostile environment. Since time immemorial, caravans have made their way over these hundreds of kilometers of sand, embarking on epic journeys in a perpetual interplay of life and death. Using the sun and stars to navigate this dynamic sea of sand, camels have carried precious commodities across the Sahara's vast trade routes. They would travel by night and over the ages, these travellers named the stars and constellations that guided them. Amazidan, a Farafra village elder. In the old days, there were no watches. We looked at the stars and knew exactly what time it was. The camel, this hardy pack animal, was probably introduced here from Asia in the 7th century BC, making it possible for commodities to be carried across the hostile Sahara. Trade routes were established. Goods from Central Africa could be traded to the towns of North Africa. Farafra was situated along the caravan routes, and to this day, caravan markers and trail remnants are still visible. Hajja Abdu, a village elder who witnessed the age of the caravans, explains that Farafra did not have enough water to cultivate grain. So they traded their dates to Asyut. We traveled for 10 days to Asyut, sold the dates and bought grain. The return journey took eight days, as we also travelled for two nights. The oases determined the caravan routes. Here, at Karawin, Nile Tamarisk has established massive protective mounds, which have grown incrementally over the centuries. 
These long-lived trees survive well on saline water, as do large tussocks of grass. In one of the harshest environments on our planet, each species has evolved to survive extreme temperatures and a chronic shortage of water. In the park, small uninhabited oases and the scattered vegetation occupying many depressions form surprising features in this arid land. Small patches of verdant green in the vast, endless sands. Water welling up from an underground reservoir creates a life-giving spring, an oasis. Here, at Ain el Saru, gushing water fills a man-made pond to quench the thirsty livestock. Amid the vegetated dunes of Ain el Makfi, ancient ruins hint at an enigmatic history. A dense vegetation cluster distinguishes Ain Khadra. Here too, a stream of water flows from the ground and meanders quietly through the oasis to fill this pool, created to trap some of this precious water before it seeps into the sands. This vestige of generations past retains its secrets as it crumbles in the desert dust. Annual plants adapt to such extreme aridity through a number of strategies, short life cycles being one, with some species able to go from seed to seed in as little as 14 days. Here at Wadi Henes, perennials often have extremely long taproots to reach water trapped deep below the desert surface. Although there are no true wadis in the park, these small stretches of depressions are known as wadis and are vital for biological diversity, providing seasonal arteries that make life possible. Other localities have localized flora. Here, the woody climber, Coccolus pendulus, clings like drapery from a cliff. An acacia grove thrives amid this desert wasteland. With their extensive root systems reaching deep underground, acacia trees are well adapted to this harsh environment. Possibly one of the most heat tolerant of all living creatures, the silver ant can survive and flourish even when surface temperatures reach a sizzling 70 degrees Celsius. As the temperature rises, other desert creatures withdraw to the shade. The nocturnal animals of the desert wait for nightfall. A scorpion prowls the land. Its venom, strong enough to kill a human, guarantees its safe passage. Illusion and deception rule the lives of the Sahara's inhabitants. Just 60 centimeters tall at the shoulder, Dorcas gazelle survive by using their keen eyesight to detect subtle changes in the landscape that could spell danger. They are so well adapted to the desert that they can live their whole lives without drinking a drop of water, taking all the liquid they need from their herbivorous diet. But to find food, they must stay on the move. These are the Sahara's children, their lives inexplicably linked. The fate of one depends on the fate of all. They are a family of survivors, caught up in the desert's great dance of life. Without a hint of warning, an unseen force asserts its will upon the land. For those caught in its path, there is no escape. Throughout the ages, the Sahara has witnessed countless creatures come and go, their births and deaths, their struggles to survive. Over millennia, wildlife has lived in concert with this ever-changing desert. It has been their home and their refuge. Many species here have become extinct due to hunting and desertification. And as the landscape has shifted from wet to dry, desert sands claiming territory, their niches are now occupied by another nation of creatures tempered over time 
to prosper in an environment of scarcity. As in most of the fertile oases of the Western Desert, Farafra has been planted with date palms and other crops that have supported a varying number of people. The old village of Kassar displays a characteristically simple mud and stone architecture. Local organic materials in harmony with the landscape. Past generations took great pride in their homes and decorated them with paintings reflecting a unique culture. Badr is a local artist who built this museum and art gallery in Kassar Farafra. He brings an album from his extensive collection. The heritage of Farafra is substantial. I have collected many photos and will continue collecting more. Men used to spin the sheep's wool and weave baskets from palm fronds. Women made pottery. In the early 1980s, a paved road was carved through the desert to bring resources and commerce to Farafra, bringing with it a steady influx of people from the Nile Valley and from other oases. Today, the old Roman wells have been marginalized by modern ones, dug deep into the million-year-old Nubian sandstone aquifer. the vast extent of which was largely determined by radar imaging from space. This huge reservoir has provided enough water to grow diverse crops, including rice. These changes will continue to exert profound effects on the culture of Farafra and its surrounding landscapes. The Friends of the Environment and Urban Planning Organization promotes awareness of the importance of conserving the park's ecosystems and engages in cleaning campaigns and restoration of the old village of Kassa. They also help utilize and develop the recently completed visitor center which was built in order to exhibit the splendor of the park and promote conservation and sustainability. Park rangers perform a variety of tasks. They patrol the desert to safeguard the environment from pollution and other threats. Monitoring various sites and documenting the status of the park's ecosystems. From this day on, the park will entrust its care to those who quest to conserve it. For millions of years, the dramas of change and survival have played out here over and over again. Sands which bore witness to the colours and songs of a vast culture will continue to support the magnificent diversity that graces this awesome desert.